Hey guys, today I'm reviewing the FL Sun T1 3D printer, which was announced late last year, but only recently launched. And the T1 promises very fast printing at 1000 millimeters per second and flow rates of 90 cubic millimeters per second. And in my testing, it actually did hit those figures, which was a very pleasant surprise. A big thank you to my friends at 3D Printing Perth, who are the Australian distributors for FL Sun and also happen to be located in my hometown of Perth, Western Australia. They loaned me this T1 to assemble and test, and this will actually be going back to their showroom in Yokine as the display model. The T1 retails for 999 Australian dollars on the FL Sun website, but you can get it from 3dprintingperth.com for $965 with my discount code Alan underscore T1. If you're in Australia and you're looking to buy a 3D printer, whether that be FL Sun or any other brand, be sure to check out 3dprintingperth.com. Anyways, let's get started with the flow rate testing results. And I put quite a few different filaments through the T1 and it can actually get quite expensive to do this type of testing. So I was very grateful for my friends at OzFDM. Just like 3D Printing Perth, OzFDM are based in my hometown of Perth, Western Australia, and they too carry really good products and provide excellent service. So do yourself a favor and head to ozfdm.com.au as well. Anyways, let's get started with the flow rate test results. This is the same data from my review of the FL Sun V400 a few months back, which compares the Elegoo Neptune 4 at the bottom, the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini above that, and the FL Sun V400 above that. Keep in mind that even the Neptune 4, which has the lowest hot end performance of this group, is still considered a fast printer. Let's put the test results from the brand new FL Sun T1 onto the graph and see how the newest printer compares. Unsurprisingly, the T1 comfortably leads every one of the aforementioned printers in flow rate, except for the odd performance with eSun PTTG. Most of the filaments achieve 50 cubic millimeters per second or higher, even OzFDM's regular PLA and PETG. The high-speed PLA and PETG each achieving an extra 8 cubic millimeters a second of flow over the regular versions. The high-speed ABS surprised me though, achieving the full 90 cubic millimeters per second claimed from FL Sun. If we consider a typical 0.4mm nozzle and 0.2mm layer heights, to print at 400mm per second, we need 32 cubic millimeters of flow. At 600mm per second, we need 48, and for 1000mm per second, we need 80 cubic millimeters per second. The default print profiles for the T1 print at 600mm per second, so not all filaments can actually match that, and it's important to pick one that does. And all the Oz FDM ones do, with the ABS leading the pack, maxing out the T1 hot end at 90 cubic millimeters per second. I did try to push the T1 hot end further, but every time that I did a flow rate test that went beyond 90 cubic millimeters per second, the T1 would throw a Moonraker error and the printing would stop. And I believe this is because the T1 is becoming power limited because I noticed that when it was printing ABS with a 100 degree bed and flowing 90 cubic millimeters per second, it was pulling over 600 watts from the wall. And if you look at the specification sheet from the FL Sun website, it rates the T1 at 400 watts of power. Still, 90 cubic millimeters per second is exactly what FL Sun claim and we were able to achieve that. And with 90 cubic millimeters per second, I was able to run this speed benchy at nine minutes and 17 seconds which is a bit quicker than the 10 minute benchy, which is included in the sample G-code. And this is certainly not perfect. It does have some issues with the underhangs and with stringing, but overall for a nine minute, 17 second benchy, I think it's doing pretty well. The first real print project that I threw at the T1 was this round rim mod for Fanatec formula rims. This is 290 millimeters in diameter. So it's actually larger than the print bed of the T1, which is 260 millimeters. So I've segmented this rim into different sections so that it can fit in pieces onto the T1 print bed. And this one went really well. I didn't push the bounds with the first prints. I wanted to feel my way through the T1 initially. So this was printed at just 200 millimeters per second, which is a pretty typical print speed for most printers these days. But this went absolutely flawlessly. So it's completely dimensionally accurate. It lines up just as perfectly as the prints from my Elegoo or my Bamboo Lab printers. And this was overall a really pleasant start. If we look closely at the surface finish of this print, we do see vertical fine artifacts in the typical Delta style, which provides this almost fine knurled effect, which I do think looks quite cool. It helps to distract a bit from the layer lines. And if we compare that to something that was printed on a bed slinger, we can see that they tend to produce very vertical fine artifacts. And this one was printed on a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I quite enjoy the appearance of the parts produced by the T1 at 200 millimeters per second. The fine knurled texture is quite nice in my opinion. 
The next project that I put through the T1 was this prototype suction duct, which is going into a dental ceramics laboratory. This is something that really played to the strengths of the T1 because this prototype is used to test fit and ergonomics before I put any refinements through the design and then deliver the final product. Every single part of this prototype was printed on the T1 using the default print profile, which prints at 600 millimeters per second, which is really cruising speed for the T1, which can go up to 1000 millimeters per second. Contrast that to my Elegoo or Bamboo Lab printers, which fully maxed out, only get to 250 millimeters per second. And what that meant was this pink piece took two hours to print on the T1 and would have taken over five hours on the Elegoo or Bamboo Lab printers that I have. Hey guys, since I filmed this part of the video, I've done a fair bit more printing and what I found was that the T1 in real world printing scenarios is about four to six times faster than my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, even when it's printing at full speed. And what that meant was that for the prototyping when I had multiple parts, one of my usual strategies is to split the job onto several different printers so they can all work alongside and I get my parts faster. With the T1, it was actually faster to just put them all onto the same bed and print them in one go, or print them, take them off the bed, put the next item on, print it, and so on. The T1 is really a lot faster than what else is available on the market right now, and I think this is a real game changer for prototyping parts. And what that means is that by using the T1, I was able to have the entire suction assembly printed within a day. So this project, which is ongoing, really showed the strengths of the T1 as a prototype printer. It just gets stuff done so fast, so you can stay in the motions and the rhythm of your design and really get your parts done quickly. Printed quickly at 600 millimeters per second, this prototype is certainly usable, but the overhang performance is not perfect. The next thing I printed on the T1 was this shaving mirror stand, which also holds my toothbrush, razor, and night guard. And this was a really good example of compromise because I wanted a really good quality print. I wasn't in a rush to get the print done, but I also wanted to see what it could do at reasonably fast print speeds. So I settled on a 400 millimeter per second print speed at 0.12 millimeter layer height. So the detail reproduction is really good from the fine layer height and four hours for a print like this is pretty good. For something like this on my Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, we were looking at 24 hours. So um, that's probably not a fair comparison because that's a two year old printer, it doesn't even run Clipper. Um, but it really shows you how far the T1 comes. I mean, it's really the next generation in speed of printers. There's one thing that I want to talk about with this project and that is that it actually started off quite a bit taller. And this is a failed print that went on the T1. And I do want to talk about the build volume on the T1 because it's listed as 330 millimeters high, but being a Delta, it's not a 330 millimeter cylinder. It's actually a pencil shape. So you get the 330 millimeters right in the center and then it comes down on the sides. And this is covered in a lot of the videos on the T1 that are out there already. So when I designed this originally, I added in a little bit of uh, safety factor and I designed it to be 315 millimeters high. I figured that if I placed the tallest point in the center of the build volume, I would still have 15 millimeters of safety zone at the top. And for the pencil shaped build volume, I figured that the spire would sit within that cone. It was a real surprise to me when the print failed at 28 centimeters only. So the FLSON T1 says that it's 330 millimeters high, and even with a relatively narrow print, which was centered in the print bed, it could only get up to 28 centimeters. So when I went back to the drawing board and redesigned it for safety, I brought it back down to 26 centimeters, which on a printer with 330 millimeters of build volume height, supposedly, I was quite disappointed that I had to design something which was a full 70 millimeters short of the advertised build height to ensure that it would print properly. What I would really like to see is FL Sun come out and declare the specific build dimension that's possible. Just straight up calling it a 330 millimeter high build volume is not useful to the end user especially when the end user tries to print something which is quite a bit less than the stated build volume. For me it was 15 millimeters less and having a print fail um, several hours in. I would really like to see a bit more transparency in the build dimension from FL Sun. 
Aside from the build volume, there are a few usability considerations I wanted to discuss, and the first one is size, which I almost forgot to mention because I've spent a fair bit of time around Delta printers lately, and I've just gotten used to how big they are. But the T1 has an effective usable build volume pretty similar to a Bamboo Lab P1S, and it takes up pretty much twice the space. So the size and weight of the T1 are definitely considerations for prospective buyers. And the next consideration is the noise. The T1 is a noisy printer. Even if we ignore the fan, which we'll get to in a moment, the movement of the motors, even at low speeds, is actually fairly noisy. But the fan really brings it into the next level because every single time that you start up a print, during the warm-up phase, the T1 will load the fan to 100% and it sounds like a vacuum cleaner from the year 2000 sitting on the bench. And my recommendation as a health professional is to use hearing protection anytime that you're spending any meaningful amount of time in the same room as a T1. I use these little 3M earplugs and they make working with a T1 a lot more bearable. After the T1 is warmed up and it starts to print, the fan noise is actually fairly reasonable provided that you're not printing at super high speeds. With low speeds and low fan, the T1 is actually not too bad. The loud fan noises at high print speeds are a bit of an annoyance, but for the speed advantage that it does give you, I do think it's acceptable. I also find the touchscreen user interface a little bit clunky. I hope that Apple Sun comes out with an update to address this. For example, loading filament. I'll start by preheating the nozzle temperature, and then when I press the load filament button, it will ask me again to input a temperature. And what will happen is that the T1 will overshoot the target temperature, and because it's above the temperature that I entered for the load filament function, it just won't load, and it'll wait until the nozzle cools down until it loads. I wish that FL Sun would decouple the load and unload filament buttons from the temperature settings. Just let me preheat the nozzle and load and unload at my command. Also, the print progress control page has a few useful functions. We can pause and stop the print, and we can adjust the Z height and also the nozzle and bed temperatures, but I didn't see any flow rate adjustability. There is this icon that I don't recognize with a percentage counter on the side. I'm guessing that's just global speed, which includes flow, but I have found on my other printers that live flow tuning is something that's useful from time to time. I'm also not a fan of the tinted panels on the T1. They are acrylic on the sides and glass on the front, and they're quite dark, and it's really hard to see what's going on inside. And for me, I like to keep a hawk eye on the first layer as it's going down to see if there's gonna be any issues, and also to just walk by and examine the print. There is an LED inside, which is enough light for the webcam, which is inside the enclosure, but not enough to light up the print as you walk past. My solution was to use my studio lights and point them straight into the sides of the enclosure and with that I had enough light to be able to walk past and see what was happening inside the prints. I'm also not a huge fan of the spool holder of the T1. It's quite a basic design which I don't mind but on more than one occasion I came to release a print from the bed and I noticed that the spool holder had jiggled out of its seated position and the spool was sitting lopsided. Never did it seem like the spool was ever at risk of falling off, but the fact that the spool holder would slip out of place during normal printing was a bit of a concern for me. Also, if you're using a fairly new roll of filament, when the T1 finishes a print and returns to home, it's going to try to push the filament off the spool and introduce a tangle. Also, the spool holder itself has quite a rough painted finish on it, and it would actually abrade the insides of my filament spools, and I was always cleaning off filament spool dust off of the spool holder, and it makes me think that there is a risk of contamination of the print or the print surface with a braided spool material. That being said, I've really enjoyed my time with the T1. It's been a really reliable printer and those rapid print speeds are really quite mind boggling. The FL Sun T1 retails for 999 Australian dollars, which is roughly the same price as a Bamboo Lab P1S. And don't forget, you can get it for $965 from 3dprintingperth.com with my discount code Alan underscore T1. And I think that it definitely provides really good value at this price point. The T1 does lack a multi-material function, which is all the rage these days, but the print speeds are in a class of its own. And for the price, I think it provides really good value for anyone that needs to turn around print ultra fast. A few things I forgot to mention, the T1 does have automatic bed leveling and Z offset calibration. So you don't even need to think about Z at all. It does it all on its own. You click print and you walk away. 
The print experience in my hands is very similar to the Bamboo Lab printers where you don't need to do anything with the Z offset at all. Overall, the build quality is quite good. The chassis is very solid. Assembly is really easy. And actually it was quite interesting to see as I was assembling this machine, all the little refinements that allow it to print so fast compared to the V400, which I reviewed a few weeks ago. In terms of the appearance, the plastic panels do make the whole printer look a lot more cohesive than the V400, which was basically an open frame. The fit of the plastic panels is okay. There's definitely a couple of raised edges here and there, but overall I'm not complaining because the money is spent on the drivetrain. The cosmetic stuff is just a nice bonus. One thing I found amusing though was the glass door has three magnets that are glued onto the back of it. And for me, two of the magnets came off on the first day that I used it. So those magnets are just stuck to the frame now. But the door still works fine with just the one magnet, which is still stuck on there for now. All in all, my conclusion is that although there are definitely some quirks to owning and using a T1, the print speed and the print quality is really quite phenomenal. And it does things that no printer in its price range can do. And I found that for my projects with its super high print speeds, I was able to just get the projects done quickly, which was really impressive. And I definitely see the strengths of an ultra fast printer like this. You don't have to run the T1 at insane speeds. It's perfectly happy printing slower than that. I'd like to see more default print speed profiles included, particularly low speed ones for filaments like TPU, which classically need low speed printing. But for fun, check out this 16 minute TPU Benchy, which was printed at 600 millimeters per second. It's not perfect, but it was fun. And here's a more reasonable 30 minute TPU Benchy printed at 240 millimeters per second which is crazy fast for TPU, but the T1 really does excel at high speed printing. So yeah, it turns out a big chunk of my complaints are actually software related. So the touchscreen and also the slicer profiles. And these are things that will probably be fixed in due course. I do feel that as it is today, the T1, even with these quirks, is still a very usable and reliable printer. And I think if you buy one and bring it home today, you'll be impressed with what it can do. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And for those of you who've made it right to the end of the video, I want to show you a little bit of movie magic. Check this out. I'm actually recording this with the printer switched off because the fans at idle were getting picked up on my microphone and I found that a little bit annoying. So I've got the printer off, which means that the screen is off, but it didn't really look right. So I ended up photoshopping the active screen on top of this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.